Hey guys, welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. It's been a few days, so I gotta reacquaint myself up a little bit, but I'm looking at these two bounty hunters we can pick from here in the stagecoach. By the way, yes, someone made the joke to uh, name bounty hunters uh, Boba Fett and Jango Fett, which I appreciate the joke, and obviously it's pretty funny that I, I would then get two bounty hunters to recruit, because then that's even funnier, but I'm going to stick with my st strategy so far of uh, naming them after people still, but I just wanted to call out the joke there. And I've already picked... No, I'm not gonna bring this guy with me because look at this. Oh cool stress resist, but uh Yeah, minus speed minus hit points and stress resist, resist isn't that great I mean I could look into the skills and compare that but frankly I have spare money So if I want to I can just retrain skills, but quirks Positive quirks in particular uh, Those are hard to come by you just have to get lucky So that's what I'm gonna mostly pick on Pick based on speed, hit points, like, yeah, I don't want him being slower and easier to kill, just because he gets some more stress resistance. Meanwhile, the other dude, uh, Hotot, where is he? There he is. Uh, his, his downside is he loses speed when he's low on health. Well, that's already better than the other guy's negative trait, because the other guy just always was slower. This guy's only slower when he's damaged. That's immediately better. And check out these awesome positive quirks. 15% damage and 15% stress resistance and 10 accuracy, and 3 crits against unholy. So if I fight unholy creatures, I get 4 separate bonuses against them on one care. That's fucking crazy! This is the zombie slayer, this guy's like Van Hels- this- this, this guy is Van Helsing. I really wish I'd- <laughs> Talk- like, you wanna talk about jokes I could use, Boba Fett, Jango Fett- no, I, I would- this is a bounty hunter- If I have a bounty hunter character with a crazy uh, uh, unholy quirks, I would call him Van Helsing, that is the- joke to go with there, but instead his name is going to be... Let me, do, let me double check that he's not already on here. Right, okay. His name is going to be Serene Eclipse, which is a neat sounding name for a uh, bounty hunter, if I do say so myself. And also, name of another viewer. And it goes right on the bottom. Oops, let me scroll down the a little thrill bit. thrill of the hunt. The promise of payment goes right down the bottom just because I'm continuing to sort people by experience level just because it's easier to figure out how to comp put my team together in that case because we're gonna run into more and more problems here as I'll show you here at the uh, place like look at this level 5 level 5 level 3 level 3 level 3 level 1 so that's gonna be the one I'm doing today I'm gonna do some stuff in town first but I want to train some lower level characters for a, a bit to get them a little higher because it would be nice to get some of these characters up to level three so I have a better I have more than four people to pick from for these level three missions and I'm probably gonna take the bounty hunter along just, just to test them out but uh you'll notice that levels becoming more and more of a thing so I, I sort I sort my uh, my party by I mean my my roster by level just so I, I can tell who the hell I could even bring on a mission without having to scroll up and down and figure it out. Although they do help me by making sure to make they color code things here so that these people are green, for example, to indicate that they've hit a specific uh, landmark in the progression system. But anyway, I'm gonna spend some time looking at town stuff and I'll, I'll catch you guys up once I figure out what I'm doing here. Actually, hang on a second. I have a bounty hunter item, right? All right, so I can give this bounty hunter an item that gives them Plus 10% chance to stun, 15% chance to, uh, for melee skills, and minus 8% damage. I might not keep- does this thing scroll- oh, this thing scrolls. Does it keep scrolling? Oh, that's cool! I was worried I had limited inventory space, but this- I can clearly keep scrolling with the inventory thing over and over again. So, that's good. I was concerned that I might have limited, uh, limited inventory space. Oh, this is looking weird, okay. Anyway, so apparently I can just keep picking up tr trinkets forever. That that alleviates some of my concern about uh, about selling stuff. Anyway, before I jump cut to me looking around town, though, I should look into this guy's skills. I for kind of forgot to do that. So collect bounty. He has to be near the front. Well, he has to be anywhere besides the back. It's a melee attack against either of the front two people. Uh, Eighty percent accuracy, normal damage, uh, no no damage modifiers, five percent crit, which is good. And uh, if the monster is tagged. It does double the damage, so there we go. So this is, this, I guess, this will be our first tagging character, which being the ability to mark people hasn't really been a thing so far. Now imagine if I mark an unholy character, and all my crazy unholy modifiers also help out. I would not be one to complain. Is this gonna be my target? Yeah, mark of death or mark for death. Uh, one hundred percent accuracy. It does no damage, and it marks the target. Straightforward. You can use it from any position, position against any position. Seems logical there. 
Basically, the skill works exactly the way that I figured it would work when I first saw it. I assume you can't dodge it? It'd be weird if you could dodge it, because it's like you're just being like, hit that guy with a thing. Oh well. Uh, come hither, which I do not currently have, but I could if I want to. You can use it from any location, and it... Ooh, it's a pull. It has very high accuracy. Only does one-third damage, but it'll pull, pull your target forward too. It can only be used against the back two targets. So that's a great way to mess up the enemy... Part, the enemy party's composition, for example, throwing ranged and taking ranged enemies and pulling them to the front. I think I might. So far, so for so far, so good for the things I'm reading for uh, Bounty Hunter. This might be one of the classes I'm particularly interested in keeping around. Uppercut. It's a melee attack. So the front. It's front two versus front two. Uh, Eighty accuracy, one third damage, knockback of two. So we have two things here. We, I can pull someone forward too, and knock someone back too. These are both interesting things to have because they both let me mess with the composition of the party of my enemies and could really reduce incoming damage and make them more vulnerable and so on by p making their tankier characters go to the back and stuff like that. Flashbang. You can use it if you're not in the front and you can use it against any enemy. Uh, high, good accuracy, zero damage, and a very... ooh. It is a 125% stun, so it's like the Barbaric Yawp, where it has an extra bonus, uh, where even someone with resistance could still get hit, have a reduced chance of getting hit. Uh, like, someone with 25% resistance will have a 100% chance of getting stunned still. And Shuffle Single, which I believe means it makes someone just randomly go in a different direction. It just re It's another way of rearranging the enemy party a bit. Finish him. Uh, used from any position against any position. Uh... Normal accuracy, bonus crit, and if your and if uh, the monster is stunned, then it gets a 33% damage bonus. So it's just a melee attack, but it's a melee attack you can use from any position against any position, and it's bonus against stun. So far, though, I don't think I've had any. S oh yeah, I do I flashbang is my stun ability. So if I stun, then do finish him, I'll get a damage bonus. If I stun somebody and I mark them for death, then I'd get. A, a very scary uh, damage bonus. And if I stun somebody and mark them for death and they're unholy, I don't even know what the math looks like at that point. I'd get like 33 damage, 100% uh, damage bonus from, uh, from what, from a uh, mark? Oh wait, never mind. The, the damage bonus is when I use collect bounty. Never mind. But if, so I'd have to do collect bounty or finish him. But either way, there are things I can do to give myself a damage bonus. And then if I stack in the 15% from my, uh, from the monster type, th th things could get scary. And I'm noticing right here, I have a bonus to stun skills from this, from this helmet, so it might be extra nice to use the flashbang because it would have a 135% chance of success, which means people with a 50% chance of resisting would only have a 15% chance, per chance of resisting instead. And that sounds nice. Get off my screen, Lucas, I'm trying to read things. Okay, hook and slice, my last ability, ranged. Uh, you can use it from the back two rows against anyone that's not in the front row of the enemies. Ranged attack with a slight, like, 5% reduced accuracy. Uh, does two-thirds damage and has a crit modifier. So it's just a ranged attack. It might be his only... Oh, okay, we have a few. Uh, collect bounty is melee. Mark for death is ranged. Come hither, ranged. Uppercut, melee. Flashbang, uh, ranged. Melee is finish him. Hook and slice is ranged. So... If I use this helmet that reduces my damage for melee, which 8% is not a lot, with the, with the damage scale we're using here, that's like losing one point of damage, it'll reduce the damage of Collect Bounty, and Uppercut, and Finish Him, and that's it. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time looking into this character. I think I'll, I'll explain what moves I take with me when I'm ready to do the mission, but I'm de I'm, I'm, I'll most likely re re rearrange things a bit. Let's look at the... Uh, camping skills, which I, I don't usually mess with the camping skills too much as far as changing what they have, because they usually have something good to start with. Uh, encourage, reduce stress of one, that's by ten, that's, that's that, yeah. Encourage and wound care are standard skills for non-magical characters. Pep talk, stress resist, also standard. This is how we do it! One companion gets bonus accuracy and crit. Wow. If this guy's in a party with, uh, Nackelson and Nackel, and he gives him accuracy and crit in, in addition to Nackelson and Nackel giving himself a crazy boost, that could make him even scarier. Although, really, that could help anyone. It could help my Captain Kerbal with her, with her terrible accuracy problems. Uh, tracking. Less likely to be surprised, more likely to surprise monsters. Very, say, pretty much the same skill as the, bounty, as the, uh, Highwayman. Plan takedown. Uh, bonus damage against large enemies. Okay, scout ahead. Improve scouting chance until the next camp. Alright, pretty straightforward. Very, 
I'm definitely, in, in some ways, this character ha seems to share similarities between uh, a highwayman and, let's say, a grave robber? Maybe. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a bit. I have to reassess the town situation and figure out what I want to do before I start the mission. I'll, I'll update you guys as I go along. We may as well treat someone. One of the one of the prone things that I one of the primary things I think of is uh Mangy has this problematic fear of beast where he they, he gets uh stress and accuracy problems and he already doesn't have great accuracy to begin begin with. Whenever we fight a beast monster and beasts seem kind of frequent, so let's see if we can help him out. Sorry, Mangy, and we're gonna take a quick trip over the tavern because we have a quite stressed out Patui. Patui could take a break, so let's see if Patui likes to- actually, let's go to my most upgraded one's drinking, right? Yeah, I ate 50. Let's see if Patui likes to drink. Because they have all sorts of stress problems right now, and Thamurd's actually not doing great either. Although, uh... It almost feel, I almost feel like this character might even thrive in stress relation- stress situations, but... Let's see. Maybe he- maybe he would like to meditate for a while, right? Definitely used to burning through some money here, so let's get ready to get started on the next mission. So, we're gonna go do that level one mission over here, the Warren's scouting mission. Explore 90% of rooms. First of all, though, we need to figure out a party. So obviously, Ballad Boxer, our new healer. Let's take them along. D did I get them the right skills? Uh, I might. E I might have to look into some what skills this character has real quick. Actually, one second. All right, I'm pretty much ready to go, so we're bringing in Ballad Boxer for the fr Well, we're bringing all these people in for the first time except for Captain Ker Kerbal. Uh, Ballad Boxer, I want to level up as our second healer, just like Boss Monster is like our second uh, DPS. I mean, not DPS, uh, second tank. So I gave her the basic healing skills and a stun, pretty much the only skills I usually use as a Vestral. So that's that's just the starters. FSN Fanatic is here to be just brand new. Uh, gave them the... the uh, Plague Doctor only item to give them bonus to blight skills and then give them some blight skills. So they have an AoE they have an AoE stun for the back two rows of the enemies. Three blight per second for three round. I mean three blight per round for three rounds. That's nine damage of blight for two guys. Also has an AoE stun, because I just I love me my stuns. So the something like an, the idea of an AoE stun, especially in a party with a Captain Kerbal on their their yawp. Like I could potentially stun. I could potentially target the entire enemy group in one turn with one overlap, even with stuns, which could really help out. Battlefield medicine, slight heal, both for myself and for another person, and to help with uh, conditions just seems handy. And emboldening vapors for bonus damage, which I can whenever I'm not using something else, I could use that on Captain Kerbal, for example, to give them more damage. Uh, new character, Serene Eclipse. These are the skills I went with. I went with the. Uh, uh, collect bounty for the bonus damage. The bounty thing itself, of course, mark for death. Uh, come hither to mess with- to pull ranged enemies into the front so we can attack them and take them down faster. And flashbang for a stun. I would have loved to have, uh, finish him for bonus damage against stun people, but I can't really do both- I can't do all these things at once, and I want to keep everything else I have around, too. Unfortunately, you are limited to four skills. And then finally, Captain Kerbal is our returning character. I gave them 15% bonus to bleed skills and 10% damage, the Hellion item. Hey, it's, it's only good things, that's great. And this thing gives them uh, more speed and damage, which is good because the, their damage goes down each time they attack. And uh, But it, it makes them more likely to become stressed and less likely to resist affliction. So we're going to have to be careful because this could go poorly for them if we're not careful. careful. Uh, bonus uh, We're going to the Warren, so I don't think the scouting chance is going to help. Uh, still has Barbaric Yop, still has Breakthrough, still has Regeneral Rush, so the, the AoE, with the AoE attack, AoE stun, and the recovery ability, because all of her attacks make her a little bit worse half the time. But, uh, oh, interesting, it, it cures Bleed and Blight. I don't remember, I, didn't, did, I do not remember that detail. I switched out a skill here, though. They used to have Wicked Hack, which is just a normal melee attack, but I switched it out for Bleed Out. Uh, it only can target the person in the, in the front. And it's only really useful if you're in the front, but I'm going to go ahead and put her in the front for this run. Uh, it gives 15% damage bonus, 5% crit bonus, those are both great. Uh, 3 bleed per second for 3 rounds, that's a potential 9 damage of bleed. And then the usual de penalty of losing some damage and dodge on myself. So, bleed out could potentially be, be really uh, strong, and so having bleed out and then this, this thing that gives me bonus uh, chance of having the trigger Seems like it could be good synergy. My one, my biggest concern is that Captain Kurgle, Kerbal out of this party is the one that has some stress already, so they might, unfortunately, 
uh, gain an affliction, but we can, we've, we're learning that we can recover from those, so it's not too big of a deal. This is a short run, so I don't need to, I don't need to bring a lot of uh, food. I might just bring the four and that's it. Bring myself a stack of torches, though, like usual. I, I, as far as I can tell, you don't really need food for these runs, because you, you're, if you become hungry ever, it'll be like once. Uh, but I, I, I want to bring a shovel, a key, and I'm always tempted to bring everything else, because we've learned that everything else has a use at, at a given moment, but I think I'm just going to save on money. Hopefully I'm not underprepared in some way. But I'm going to do the opposite of what I usually do. Just like when I go on trips and stuff like that in real life, I'm always overprepared and bringing too many things. I know we're going to, we're going somewhere for five days. That's great. Uh, uh, no big deal about the fact like you know like we're there to have fun too. But no, let's pack four books and a video game console. Don't forget the Vita and all these other things. I'm like I'm not gonna use, I don't use any of these things. So to prosecute our war against the swine, we must first scout their squalid homes. So let oh 90% of all rooms. So I'm gonna have to go. I might as well go the backwards way first if we if we're gonna have to explore most directions anyway. So we'll let. F and Fnag do some reading, maybe? But a bunch of sloppy scrolls. Oh no, they're boring. Uh, I guess we lose do we lose some, some light there? So we're gonna continue to explore here. I'm hoping that I haven't underprepared, but I'm I'm gonna undershoot because I think I often overprepare and spend too much money. So let's try to do the opposite here. So they have successfully been surprised. So let's get used to this new party this new class of groups. So uh everyone has seven hit points. If I do collect bounty on one of them, it will do four to nine damage, so it could basically just kill them right here. So marking someone for death seems kind of pointless, because yeah, it could make it easier to kill them, but seems kind of pointless if they're gonna die right away anyway. Uh, similarly, messing with their party composition seems silly, because they're all just generic, they're, they're just monsters. Let's just start hitting them. Yeah, he's dead. I'm over, I'm over explaining the fact that I'm, just, I'm fighting super, super, I'm fighting some dumb little spiders and there's nothing interesting to do against them, so I'm just gonna start hitting them with stuff, so take it. Basically, just have to hope that you can take them out before the uh, they get a chance to fight back, like that. Okay. Executed with impunity. That is this game's equivalent of trash mobs. Advantage. Give them no quarter. Are we doing on light? 81, so we should still be fine. We shouldn't get. We shouldn't have any bonus chance of getting surprised. And this room is empty. So moving forward. Hey everybody, how you doing? Anyone want to fight? Oh, torch time. So one torch is down. By the way, this place was listed as short. It has more rooms than I was expecting it to. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, you want to take a look at this, Serene? Occult scrawlings. Scrawlings written on what looks like stretched and tanned human flesh. Well, human flesh in a cult. That, that sounds like a holy water type, right? Holy water hisses and hero feels... Oh no, a debuff! Minus 20 dodge. I didn't get to finish reading it, though, because the bark was too short. But uh, something, something bad happened. Oh no! I thought using the holy water would help us out, but maybe the whole- maybe the occult stuff was built to defend against holy water's, uh, interference for all we know. Are we gonna have a fight? There's no fight. Well. I would be disappointed, but our objective is to explore, right? Oh god. Okay, eat, I guess. God damn it, are we- Okay, that- we-, we I went two rooms in and we're already eating? Maybe I should have brought more food. I might pay for for not bringing enough. We're gonna get some stress. We're we're gonna take stress and hunger damage if I if I didn't bring enough, unfortunately. But there's no fixing that unless I just randomly find more food. I thought for sure that ha bringing only uh, four would be fine because I felt like we would only get hungry once. But the idea that we got hungry only two rooms in when we have eight to explore gives me pause. So we're not having any luck scouting so far. So far, I'm not getting any bonuses to finding out what's ahead. Of what the fuck? Why are we hungry? What's ha what happened? Do I have like a negative bonus I'm missing somewhere? I literally haven't done anything yet. Uh, I'm looking for things that- I'm looking for any modifiers on my characters that affect their- how much they need to eat. Cause I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, oh. Well, oh, when high stress minus food consumed, that's not the problem though. Okay, so we're, we're just gonna have to starve. Force of will wow. can overcome a failing body. Wow, this is uh going bad fast. I'm like two rooms in and I've only explored two rooms still. And I'm already I've already gotten hungry twice? What is this bullshit? This is actually like legitimately like dangerous potentially. Let's read some scrolls. Hey, a scouting map. 
Alright, use a torch real quick. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted and purpose is made clear. Uh, we have two barriers and I only brought one shovel, so I think the logical thing to do is, is to try to avoid the barrier that's right in front of me on the map. The one that's right here, the, that's the blue square. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go start in the middle, go left, try to keep going up, then go right. Use, I have to break that barrier with my shovel, then end on this room, and that'll be how we finish exploring the dungeon. That's a, that's the first thing that comes to mind for me, anyway, of having a path where I don't have to re retrace my steps, and I don't have to go through both barriers, because right now, one shovel. Unfortunately, they could, they could always just throw another surprise barrier at me, and I won't be able to do anything about that. Anybody here? Wow. We're continually having empty rooms, okay. So we have a trap right off the bat, so let's look at our trap resistances. I, my, off the top of my head, Bounty Hunter seems like they'd be good against traps. 30%. Oh, Hellion also has 30%. Yeah, I, I figured the, the caster types would be lower. 0%. Ha. <laughs> Alright, so prove your worth, Serene Eclipse. Come on. Alright, disarmed. Good job. Yeah, any rogue type character, I assume, is going to be good against traps. And I, 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 first things that came to mind were like Hellion and... What is this little nightmare over here? Uh, this thing covered in heads. Well, you're good with plagues, right? So maybe touch the creepy corpse things? A barrel that reeks of po powerful liquors. Take a look. Oh no, you're violently ill. Except not. I kind of figured as much, because this character is the plague doctor. So even if it was a trap, whatever comes out of that was probably not going to matter. They're saying to be quiet. I think that means that they can hear someone in the next room. I'm going to go ahead and use a torch as we approach. The way is lit. The path is clear. Maybe we'll we surprise them. Only the strength to follow it. Yay, they're surprised. They didn't rearrange it. Why is it when I get surprised, my party gets rearranged, but when they get surprised, nothing really happens. Anyway, seems logical to do a, I could do a breakthrough to do, oh my god, scary amounts of damage to these guys, especially since I have a good hit chance too. Or I could go for a yop to stun two of them. I'm going to go for this though, because I could actually start killing them with this hit. They might act like, if I'm really lucky they could all die, but that would be a, a, an incredibly low chance. Or they could all get dodged, and then I get debuff anyway. Exciting. Okay, so... Let's do it. I could start healing the party, or I could start, uh... I'm gonna go for healing the party because everyone did take damage from starving earlier, and that seems like a way to go, but... Stunning people would also be handy. Just because we have so many enemies right now. But I might be able to help that with my Plague Doctor and his AoE stun! Fuck you guys. Res ah, resisted one? Okay, well at least one of them worked. And my, and my flashbang can help out too. Oh! If I use come hither, I can bring this guy up to the, closer to the front and we can all target him at once. Come up here, buddy! Don't you dare resist that too. You resist the asshole. So through the power of through the power of uh, surprising people, we got a bonus turn. So I'm going to try to... Let's try to stun the, the drummer. Because I... Oh, wait. Yeah, these guys have huge stun resistances. So let's go for the drummer. 125% chance of, of, of working. He has 25 resist, so... My, all I have to worry about is my 10% chance to miss, because he's not going to resist this. It crits. Blow. And, he, and it shuffled him either further into the front. So we're doing fairly well here. Just need to start uh, wrecking shock with what's left of this group now. Uh, I'm going to go for breakthrough again, even though I'm losing my, my damage and hit chance at this point. Really? Twice? You had a good chance of hitting, too. That's just bad luck on my part. Okay. Well, the good news is I can AoE stun again, because these are- oh wait, no, these, these guys are resistant to stun, I should not be doing that. How's their blight- their blight resistance- these are the anti- these are like the opposite of what I want to fight as a Plague Doctor, so I'm gonna do Emboldening Vapors to make someone strong instead. Let's power up our melee fighter. Because apparently my Witch Doctor- my, uh, my Witch Doctor- I'm sorry, I'm playing- I'm playing as a Witch Doctor in my, uh, my, uh, Diablo 3 series on sad games that we're doing right now. So I could do an AoE heal, or I could stun I'm gonna go for the AoE heal. Gotta do that maintenance from turn to turn. It's the long game, so to speak. Drums of debilitation. What are, you, what are we gonna have here? We're marked. So does that guy have mark-based attacks? I'm gonna have to go for... What's my yaw hit chance? 90% uh, chance of hitting, but not great uh, chance of success. I'll have a... I'll have 100% in the front. 50%? Actually, that's a decent chance. Yeah, stunning half the enemy party is a decent way of, uh, helping us stay alive and, and not, you know, for the rest of the dungeon. Even though I have to worry about... Oh, double stun, good. 
The bad news is I have minus 60% damage and minus 30 dodge right now, because I've now done three of those without using an Adrenaline Rush. So now my character's next to useless until I start spamming Adrenaline Rush. I am noticing I, have, I may have set myself up with too many status effect characters and stuff like that, and not enough characters that can actually uh, specifically go after people with attacks. So that could be a problem. But I think I can make this work. So let's try... What, what happens if I do Collect Bounty? I'll have 49 damage, or I could double the damage but spend two turns doing it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go... I wish I had more characters that cared about marked targets, because that would be handy. I'm gonna try to take out this guy in the second row, especially since he has a stun resistance. As there the we go. Falls, a faint hope blossoms. Turns out, you know what's better than a stun? An actual kill. Okay, Battlefield Medicine, I can, I can get rid of this... Yeah, I, I can heal these people from their current problems, let's go for that. Oh no, cure failed. I had such a good chance of it working too. What are you good for? <laughs> this this person has just the worst failure rate right now. Okay, do I have anti-venom in my- Nope, I have no items that can help me with this problem right now, so I'm just gonna have to go for an attack. I can do some devastating damage, but I'm gonna have to try to- Let's mark this guy in the front. It's funny that the mark does damage, that you wouldn't really necessarily expect that. If I go for breakthrough, what's my hit chance? I have a surprisingly high hit chance, despite having minus... Oh, minus 40. Minus 40. Oh, I, right, that doesn't affect my hit chance. It's only minus damage. So not a lot of damage, but I could hit the whole party still. Might be worth doing, or I could bleed this guy out. Though it's a little redundant because of the fact that I was just marking him. So that's bad. That's kind of some bad party uh, coordination right there. Screw it. Hit them all. Ooh, we actually hit them all, too. The game did what I wanted. That doesn't very- that doesn't always happen. Heh. <laughs> single target heal bounty hunter. Cause he's losing some hit points. There we go. They're going after Serene. So it's a good thing I just helped out with that. Let's see if I can actually heal him this time. Oh, really? Failed twice and no heal. Even the heal was zero. You're just screwing with me now. Does this guy just hate being healed? Does he hate doctors? Is that Serene's problem? <laughs> They're laying it on thick. So yeah, I may have made a somewhat impotent fighting party here. Although, to be fair, they're all level 1, and there's some parties that I'd almost never used before. So just do what I can to keep uh, Serene going, because he's taking a lot of hits. It's not an ideal situation. Alright, so it's his turn again. Let's... I marked this guy. Now it's, let's wipe him out, hopefully. Confidence surges as the enemy so that's a terrifying amount of damage to do against a level 1 dungeon enemy. So what are we going to do? These 2 to 3 damage? Uh, let's just go for it. Or not. Okay. My bad. Not having great luck here. Please cure his, his blight. Thank goodness. <laughs> Took so many attempts. Still taking zero, zero heal though, unfortunately. We're gonna get munched. We're getting munched. God damn it. They really are trying so hard to kill Serene during this fight. Let's yawp these assholes. Oh wait, the stun resist is bad. Ah, uh, going for it anyway. And it did not pay off. <laughs> this game does not like it. Does not reward me for taking risks. Let's get Serene going back up. Stop. Stop this death. It's, uh, why does he have to be always dying? Oh no. Alright, Serene's turn. Let's go m just melee someone's freaking face off. Or, or miss. That's fine. You only had like an 80% chance of succeeding. <laughs> what do we have? Uh, please cure him again. Hey! Now we're two for four. Things are looking up. We're making forward progress. He's let's see that's him getting experience as a plague doctor. He's 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 doctoring plagues. There we go. Now we actually made contact with our attack. The thing that you're hired for. Alright. Uh there's no one to heal with the medicine right now, so I'm just gonna go for a buff on damage. Now they're up to yeah, 15% bonus. Just do it uh I'll do the AoE heal. I could I could might be able to kill him this turn with that character, but it, it's good to do some maintenance on the damage we have here. Let's do bleed out. Good chance of hitting. There we go. I should I should be I should use bleed out more. That's my ma that's my bad. But a victory nonetheless. Because bleed out does strike me as being one of the more par more powerful skills I have right now. Hello torch. I will gladly take a torch. As far as I know, salvaging a torch never turns around and turns out to be a trap. All right, serene. It's trap time. Or you could just go step in it. That's also cool. Is the trap maker's art. 
I've never his been more proud. Unwitnessed by his own eyes. Unfortunately, I do not have uh, anything to deal with the blood, so you're just gonna have to get used to it. And I think the plague doctor can help you. Yeah, blight and bleed, but I have to wait until actual fight starts. Unfortunately, that is the weird part of this game: is that you have these abilities that can heal status the effects, the but you can't use them until you actually get uh, into a combat, which is weird. Like in Final Fantasy, when you're walking around as like Titus or whatever. Uh, you can still tell your characters to go, ooh, heirlooms. You can still tell your characters to use their healing spells on each other outside of combat, because that's what makes a little more sense. So we're still debuffing this character? Yeah, minus 20 dot. That's probably why everyone's focusing on my bounty hunter, is because of his dodge chance being down. About to go under 75 light, so In keep this ball going. We find victory. We're in our last three rooms, and no one's gotten hungry again yet, which is a good sign. Wow, not really any fights. That's fine, I'll just take the reward without fighting on the way there. I'm not against that idea. I'm not above getting money for free. Like that. That money right there. That's free money. Oh no! Spiders, what do we do? Oh, we've been surprised! Gosh dang it, we didn't even have a chance of getting We didn't have a bonus to our chance of getting surprised either. It just sort of happened. Well, if I'm lucky, I can just one-shot them. Or they can get dodged. That's good. I love you too, Hellion. Uh, oh cool, emboldening vapors against all- oh wow, this is the worst. My two ma my two healers are in, are in the worst position right now. I can make someone stronger. Yeah, you're stronger, bounty hunter. But at this point, I'm assuming my best chance is just to end the fight, uh, rather than trying to, uh... Rather than trying to rearrange myself. Be gone, fiend. A surprising amount of damage coming from Ballot Boxer. It's not, not what you expect from the designated healer. Alright, so... Ah, uh, well I can stun somebody at least. Maybe. Success! So that little shit's gonna just wait around and get killed by our, our healer, probably. Success! Wow, max roll twice in a row. This expedition at least promises success. Hey, we got some food, too. Not a bad thing to get. Rearrange? Alright, success. So that could have gone worse, for sure. They stunned my, uh... They successfully stunned Kerbal, but at least, uh... Serene was able to stun in return, and uh, Ballot was basically able to single. Ha uh oh, I forgot to do the torch. My bad. So that that could we're not stun we're not surprised ourselves, but it, we could have potentially surprised them and given ourselves a bonus turn. So I could go for an AOE stun. They have a low chance of resisting it, so that'd be a g that'd probably be a good move. Take two of them out of the combat for a while. I could also go for a plague grenade to do start doing d a serious damage to them too. But they'd also get to keep doing turns. I'm gonna go for the stun for now. Definitely we're gonna want to heal Serena. Oh, they resisted it. The chances of that were not really high. Alright. Let's do what we can to keep Serene on his feet, because he is taking every hit he can. Uh, let's go for a bleed out against the front guy. Wow, I could one-shot them. And I did! Alright, who's next in line for my bleed out ability? You guys excited? It's gonna be fun. <laughs> I should just keep using Embolden and Vapors against him, uh, on my, uh, Such my front, on Captain Kerbal. Alright, so, Captain Kerbal's stress is at... Hella high? 93%. So, we're gonna have to get, we're gonna have to try to end this fi fight quickly. If we're going to get out of here. Let's try to rearrange their party to mess with this. Come on, get up here, wretch. Take some, take some bad damage when you don't mean to. Oh no, they're going to, oh, the vomit. Please don't give me a status. Uh-oh. Resolve's tested. Masochistic! No! Covered injury. Nothing refreshes the spirit like one's own blood. No short supply. This is a bad place to be in. Our bleed, our crazy bleed character is now talking about their own blood. So I, I, I wouldn't be too surprised if this character then decided, Oh, you know, I'm just gonna, just gonna start hurting myself now instead of fighting other people. That could be a thing that could happen. They might just skip their turn to hurt themselves. I'm going to... Go for a stun on their damaging character. Yeah, they have a good chance of being stunned. There we go. Keep messing with their party composition in general. Uh, no one is currently bleeding or blighted, so I'm not going to go for the heal. So, I, I, what, I, uh, what I could do is I could go for Emboldening Vapors to make my Hellion stronger to do more damage. Which seems like a great move because of how much damage they do, but it doesn't seem like a great move because... I don't know what they'll do as a masochist. If they start hurting themselves, like, what if she can one-shot herself for all I know? I don't... I'm gonna hope she doesn't straight-up murder herself. At the very least, we'll get a... 
We'll get a good story out of it if she does, does, does something dumb. So I can bleed out the front guy, do comical amounts of damage to them, and oh, and over completely overkill them with my crazy damage output right now. Uh, or I could do the breakthrough to try to hurt people that w that are try to hit everyone else too. Pretty good chance of hitting. I'm gonna go for it. That's a lot of damage. Oh yeah, take it, party. So if I so what happens here is uh, I get minus 40 damage, mainly because of uh. And basically, every time I get a, use a skill, it reduces damage, but we're getting bonus damage from that uh, emboldening vapors from the Plague Doctor, so the damage output I have could be, get pretty absurd, and I could maintain it pretty well if I, if I do it right. I'm gonna try to heal up uh, our continually attacked uh, Bounty Hunter, and hopefully they, don't get enough, hopefully they don't get a lot of chances to single target my Bestral, because he is not doing great now either. Man, everyone's stressing out. This is what ha I guess this is what happens when you get a bunch of new people around, right? You don't know how to work with them, they don't know what they're doing, everyone's everyone's getting stressed real fast. <laughs> if you spill my blood, you'll no doubt you'll not doubt my resolve. We have seen m such horrors already. Now everyone's getting really stressed, so uh please please chill out, main character. You're gonna you're gonna get us all killed. Or you could kill everybody else, that's also, you know, at least she's got it at least she's rolling, right? Let's go for the hit. Six oh a singular strike. Well, we succeeded, at the very least. And are rewarded with... Bleedstone. 10% to, to bleed skills. Minus 1% crit. Portrait Onyx Shovel. Okay. And we've completed the quest at this point, so I could just leave. But do I want to explore more or not? Anyway. That stress resist is not helping me at all, so... But meanwhile, Bleedstone could be handy. 10% uh, to bleed skills. On top of this other bleed skills thing, I could make uh, I can make bleed out an incredibly effective skill by d by swapping these out a bit. So I might go for just that right after I equip from this screen. I was right clicking for no good reason. Minus damage, minus yeah. I'm not gonna give anyone a a, re a reduction to stress resist right now because everyone is about to get a, an affliction right now. I don't see a lock on this thing, so I'm just gonna try to open it. I think we'll use a character with the lowest stress, hopefully. Let's see. I don't know, could it, does a key help? I'll use it anyway, fuck it. This item has no effect. Oh, well, the, and, and the key's gone! How'd you lose it? Where'd, where'd it go? Oh well. Constants are mine. Money and seals, these are good things. So do I check out what's down there? Risking a, another fight and potentially... Everyone going all cray cray. Fuck it, we'll break them in. <laughs> it's a terrible idea, by the way. Alright, shovel time. Oh, or go back in the door. That's also a cool thing to do, I suppose. That was, uh, they m might have put this shovel in to, to this, uh, shovelable spot too close to this door. Makes you want to use that. Okay. Try it. Try it again. God damn it. Can you please stop going through the door? You're making me look like a silly person right now. Such okay. Such blockages are unsurprising. These tunnels predate even the earliest settlers. We're good. We've got shovel powers. Look at this gross pile of shit. Here, Plague Doctor, you go you go touch it. <laughs> touch it with your stuff. Oh no, it's not sl it's not clean. Did not matter apparently. Okay. Good to know. Our lights down a little bit, so we'll fix the that. Is struck. Probably a the last time we'll have to use a torch. You may have noticed that I'm not really editing audio anymore. Oh, it's over. That's the whole dungeon. Da 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 da. Yeah. Let's get out of here. The swine folk's labyrinth may yet prove to be navigable. Well, the good news is 6,000 gold, so that's a good amount of money to get back, especially since I kind of had to invest in the on the front load on some of these characters to get them the right skills, and I upgraded some people's equipment that weren't on this mission and then had to heal people, so good little bit of maintenance. It was overall a net loss in this episode in money, but that's because I had a lot to do. You'll notice that I've reduced how much I edit audio, though, in this series. I do the beginning and ending of episode thing where the guy talks, but overall, I've noticed that the things he has to say during combat are just the same things over and over again, so I've largely started to ignore them. Hemophilia. Oh no, less bleed resist. It's almost ironic, because that's the bleed character. Bonus damage in the ruins. Okay, that's great. Scouting chance and stuff like that are all good, but a straight up damage bonus during an entire zone makes those characters really handy in those zones. Oh no. Serene Eclipse has a a, tone ro ro a torn rotator cuff, so they they uh, uh, get they lose five percent damage in melee. Although five percent is pretty small, a lot of attacks don't even do ten damage. So that's like that's less than one damage in production. 
So it might not, might not affect anything. Scanning chance, that's good. Good to have. Uh, Fusion Fanatic, uh, bonus speed and dodge in first round. Great. Just a better person in the first round. And Ballad Boxer gets better, uh, gets a bonus specifically for meditating. That's good. Every time I, I, uh, every time it's time to reduce stress, I don't know where to send people because a lot of them have no particular preference as far as I can tell, aside from maybe what you learn from experimentation. So now I know I can take that person to meditate for the bonus. poor caretaker. I fear his long-standing duties here have affected him. All right, so how are things going around here? So three characters leveled up to level one. Now everyone's level one. No more level zeros to deal with. Patui has become outranked by Captain Kerbal in experience, just slightly. Uh, let's see. We got rid of Fear of Beast on Main G, which plagued them for ages. The, the, the fact that they had uh, they had to deal with uh, d having bonus stress against Beast was kind of becoming become a problem. Thamurd is now enlightened. I'm glad. I'm grateful for the bon for the stress reduction, but it looks like they have a negative trait we have to deal with now. I'm guessing because they meditated. Maybe enlighten means they can't meditate anymore to reduce stress. So basically, they're, they've they're, they've become so good at praying that they're enlightened. <laughs> that's uh that's concerning and just a straight reduction of stress for Patui. Good for you. That's what I was hoping for. So let's look at enlightened. I assume you can't. You can no longer. Pr uh. Oh, in town will only meditate for stress relief. Okay, never mind. I thought they were saying, like, I've meditated so much I don't have to do it anymore, so they just would not do it anymore. It's the opposite problem. Now they'll only meditate. Which, you know, having a specific stress stress situation, not terrible, because you could just prioritize them. The problem is the caretaker can take up a slot at random, and that is where I get into trouble. So let's let's, let's look into Kerbal's uh, reduction options. Uh... uh <laughs> Experiences religious visions and delusions. Believes is possessed by demons. Minus bleed resist it. And is also there so there this person has religious visions and delusions, thinks they're possessed by demons, and is a masochist. So, you know, building up building up that uh that okay cupid profile. <laughs> I'm gonna see if they're so religious and crazy and masochistic. I mean let's just go go to flagellation to help with that situation. Can I upgrade that? Reduce treatment cost. I'll go for it. It'd be handy to a robe, spend less. Claiming communion with the divine. So now it costs 1300 instead. It's a bonus. Only through blood will I know absolution. I figure they're probably going to be good at uh, flagellation for stress release if they think that if they're a masochist that thinks they're possessed by demons. So, that's off to the case. I will see you guys next time where we'll probably have to figure out how we're going to do stress reduction on the remaining characters and check out who's at the stagecoach and then go on another mission. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.